Welcome to Phil Margo, The Lion Roars. Good morning, Phil. How are you doing? Good morning, Malcolm. How are you? Okay. I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to tell my story because I want my children to know things that they might not know. Oh, definitely. And this, is for pos this is for posterity. You know it all. I'm posterizing. Um, I think where we were last time was we, we had just... Uh, I explained how we did. He's so fine. We played the yeah. instruments, and um, and we couldn't sell it. But we finally, Lori Records finally bought it, and wouldn't let us out of the office until we made a deal. Okay, this was in, this was in 1960. This was in 1960. We made the deal in 1962. And how how old were you? Well, I was 20. 20. Okay. I was I was I was twenty in nineteen sixty two, but anyway, um, let me make this bigger. I don't know where. I don't know what happened. Wait one second. Well, you're you're big on my screen. Anyway, anyway, um, so we played the instruments ourselves. We went around to twelve companies, and nobody wanted to buy it. Uh, even at Capital, one of the A and R guys there, because we had a deal at Capital, one of the guys said. I like the group, but I don't like the song. And one of the guys said, I like the song, but I don't like the group. He's so fine we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking about a record market to girls, to teenage girls, okay? A song called He's So Fine. How do you deny that? And with, with Do Lang, Do Lang and the whole thing. And it was just amazing. The opening of the record was amazing. And, and 12 companies, including all the majors, all of them, RCA, Columbia, Capital, turned it down and we made it for Capital. So we went around and finally we got to Lori Records and Lori, Gene Schwartz and, and, and Bob Greenberg wouldn't let us out of the, we said, okay, let, we'll make a deal. Um, and and I'll have you, my lawyer call you. He said, no, no, no. We want to make a deal now before you leave the office. So we made the deal. And he so fine, of course, was a monster hit. We used, we got an advance from Lori because Lori knew it was going to be big. And we bought the record and, every, and all the rights back from Capital. Okay. Capital had the rights to that record. We made that at Capital Records. We were still on the contract. But we got an advance from Lori to pay back the money that we took from Capital. So we got everything back. That was a, that was a nice move. Now, now, did the tokens do that or he gave that to the chiffons? Tokens, the the tokens. The tokens did. The tokens produced it. Yeah, but they didn't. Uh, but they weren't the voice. They didn't. No, sing. no, no, no. Well, the, the, the little secret is that in one fine day. Well, we'll get to that. Oh, that one fine. Oh, that's one fine day. Never mind. Okay. We didn't sing on "He's So Fine." We played the instruments. We couldn't. We played the instruments. We played the instruments. The girls sang, and the guy, and the only person in the booth, in the audio booth, was the engineer, who told us when when we first did the eight bar intro, and then bop, and the girls, he's so fine, and, and the girls went do lang do lang do. Lang. Well, he said, wait a minute, stop. Why don't you start with that do lang thing? It's cute. So we said, okay, okay, girls, you got that? Yeah, on the first pop, yeah. One, two, three, four, pop, do, lang, do. And that's the way the record began. Yeah. Um, so anyway, He's So Fine became a big hit. And Carol King and Jerry Goffin, who were very successful in writing follow-ups to hits that already happened. In other words, um, um, they did it for Bobby V. They did it for the, for the uh, uh, Shirelles who had, they had Tonight's the Night and they wrote, Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Um, and 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 so Carol called me up and said, Carol King, and said, I have a perfect follow up for the chiffons. We're, we just did the demo with little Eva and we'd like you to hear it. And I said, sure, send it over. So she sent over and it was one fine day. Mm -hmm. And I said, I will do it if you give me the track. Because the track that they made, it only had the drums and the guitar and the piano on it, right? Because back then you had to make a demo, you had to bring musicians in, you paid demo rate, but you try to make a demo with as small, less, less musicians as possible. 
you know, so because it, it costs whatever it costs for each musician. It costs money. <laughs> right. So so we did. So we did. Um, so I took the demo and I added a bass and the sax solo and the clapping, and I added the do lang part for the the um, I mean the shubi do wah wah you know shubi do be do be do be do wah wah that wasn't in the original demo. It was just her singing the song. So we added that and we went in, went in and made the record. And Laurie wanted to, you know, Laurie was, Laurie Records was, was thrilled. And of course, also at that time, we had done Denise with Randy and the Rainbows, which was also climbing the charts. So we had one fine day and Denise out at the same time. So we had two records on the charts. So you, you, you were producing these records? Well, yeah, that's, we produced them. Yeah. Yeah. And that all came from my, from me, by what I said on the last episode about how I listen to music. Uh, you know, I, I thought everyone listened the way I listened, but it turns out that I listened as a producer, even though I was a kid. Right. As a four-year-old, I would listen to the different parts of the record and, and, and isolate them and said, oh, that, that works nice against what the singer is doing. So I was kind of, I understood, you know, I was understanding arrangement. People didn't understand arrangement when it was, they just heard a bunch of instruments playing. So, so we, we did He's So Fun. And one fine day, of course, I didn't play on because it was already a demo. There were drums and we added a bass part, you know, a bass violin. And, what, what, what instrument did you play? Pardon? What instrument did you play? I played piano, drums, guitar. But on the on he's so fun, I played drums. Drums, okay. And um, uh, and so so we so at that time, I was small little office, who everybody doubted and thought we were like you know forget about us. We had three records on the charts. Wow. The Randy and the Rainbows and the Chiffons too, right? And um. And with that success. We left Capitol because our deal was up and we started our own office. We had our own office in the building that now Stephen Colbert was in and before him, David Letterman, 1697 Broadway. We were and in that, suite, six, suite 605, 605A. That, yeah. that wasn't the Brill building, was it? No, the Brill building was, was, was further down, mm -hmm. was further, further down Broadway. We were on 53rd. Brill building was down on 52nd or 53rd. Yeah, because the, the Brill building is what I heard of is, you know, is, is a nun. Uh... We, we went up to the Brill building when we first started with our demo. We would start on the top floor and knock on doors all the way down, you know, and, and, and we had no luck there. This was before all that happened. But we chipped, you know, we, we chipped in and, and made a demo of, of a song, of a couple of songs we wrote. One was called Please Write, and one was called Pretty Kitty. Pretty Kitty. Pretty Kitty. It was about a, about a, a guy who was talking about Pretty Kitty, who turns out to be a cat, you know. Hmm. Pretty Kitty has the softest hair and his cute pug nose turned up in the air. When my pretty kitty's walking down the street, all of the other cats think she's kind of sweet. You know, my oh my, she's you know, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, kitty cat, kitty cat, where have you been? I've been to the record hop. Kitty cat, kitty cat, what did you do? The mo, chalypso, and even the slop, you know, that kind of thing. It's and amazing then, you, re you remember all those lyrics after. Oh, was, I, you know, I remember, yes. And and please write, which was, which has a certain amount of success, even, you know, even though it was never really re released successfully as a record it was it was a lot of people it was on the b side of a couple of records we did and people used it as a thing for the troops you know that were that were at war at the time you know that was uh yeah it's no yeah there that yeah so um um you know we we would do that and and um and we and we were having slight success with our own stuff. We were still recording for RCA. We were making chart records, but we never did anything like the Lion Sleeps Tonight again because we concentrated most of our energy on producing. Because mm -hmm. we felt that, you know, there was 
if you weren't a big group, you didn't make money. I mean, we did, you know, the gigs we did were a joke. I mean, we did a, we got, we did a, 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 a gig, a nightclub gig in a place called Crescidos in Staten Island, right? Yeah. So we go and we get paid three hundred fifty dollars, right? And we had a like, we had a, like our number one record, and we go in and we 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 dress in the beverage where they where they stored the beverages. There was no dressing room. No dressing room. Yeah. And we and we and we're dressing. You know, we're all and in comes this lovely youngish girl, and she's. She starts undressing completely. She's the stripper and she undresses and then dresses with her strip clothes to strip, you know. <laughs> so she took off her strip clothes. So that, that, after that, I had no modesty whatsoever. I would walk around in my dressing room in my shorts and not care, you know. I still like when I, if I have a female doctor, I said, fine, you know, whatever. <laughs> I have my, 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 uh, my, uh, Dermatologist is a is, is a is a lady woman, yeah. I don't, I don't know, whatever, you know, I'm, I, it went away that that whole idea of of be, being exposed. I never <laughs> cared. And and she, and she was very sweet. And she turned it turned out that she was a student at, at Hunter College, and she ah. was putting us, she was putting herself through school, working her way through college. I, I always wished I kept track of her, but I never knew what happened. But anyway, but that yeah. was the kind of experience. So there was no money. But basic line, it was no money in that performing, unless you, you know, unless you were, you were, you were a, a big act like, like you know, like like the, the I don't know the, the Kingston Trio, you know, people like that. Well, did you so, go? Did you go touring at all? Like you know, these big tours <laughs> and Alan Freed. And... We did some colleges and 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 you know, it just it wasn't it. It's we didn't love it. I didn't love it at first performing, um, but. And 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 we were you know we were, we, were, uh, we were we were all getting married you know and we didn't want to travel that much so it was easy to do a gig here and there that came up and concentrate on producing which we were doing very well uh, um, and and then we started BT Puppy Records our own label BT Puppy is it, we call it BT Puppy because it was RCA had a dog. Okay, and we were on RCA originally, so it, it, as as a as a kind of a hello to RCA and BT was, we lived in Brighton Beach and our and our publishing company we called it Bright Tunes Music, so BT from Bright Tunes okay. and Puppy from the Dog, mm. and we got very successful. We had the happenings on that label, we had you know we had very, great success with them too as as producers. Mm. So we, you know, so, we, and then, I mean, we were good at it. And even during the English invasion, when every, you know, when all the English artists came in. Yeah, the, the Beatles. We still, uh... Yeah, we still kept making hit records. We made the we made records the way we made records. To us, it was always a song. You start with a good song and don't fuck it up and you'll have a hit record. Yeah, when did you do The Lion Sleeps Tonight? How was 61? A whim away. So, so this is all post uh, a whim away. See, first, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, we we only got the gig at at um at Capitol because we had the success of the Lion Sleeps Tonight. And a lot of people gave us credit for being involved in not just singing it, because we had made a demo. See, when we I don't know if I talked about this, we made a demo of Whim Away. Um, you know, 50 bucks. We went into the studio. Uh, uh, I, I'm, uh, we all played and we played instruments. Um, and that demo served as the blueprint for the record. You know, it had the it had a, it had a, a um, um, and it was that feel, you know, and, um, and we, but the demo only had the, only had the, uh, the chant and the, and the, you know, and there was no lyric. Uh, when we went to RCA to audition, RCA wa wanted to see what happened was we had we had a hit record tonight. I fell in love. Right. That was the one where the lady we met the lady on the train and she and her, her, 
a, a, a son or a producer and da da da. Right, yeah, we, we talked about we, that, right. We recorded, we recorded five tunes in three hours, you know, with an orchestra, with, a, with an orchestra. And Tonight I Fell in Love was the best cut and we felt had the most chance of being a hit. And Morty Craft at Warwick Records liked it and wanted to put it out. A lot of labels turned it down. Morty Craft wanted to put it out. And then one day he decided he didn't want to put it out because we, and it turned out he, he, he didn't like the name we picked for our group. We picked the name Those Guys. Right. We wanted yeah. Those Guys. And he didn't like that. So we, the reason we wound up was the tokens. And when we went to see him in the city, you know, like from Brooklyn, we drove in. I drove in and I got a flat and I almost, and I never changed the flat. So I almost turned the car over changing it. Mm. But um, we went to see Morty and we, we said, Morty, why, 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 how come you changed your mind? I don't like the name. I said, well, change the name. He said, well, why don't we use the name that, you know, you know the tokens that I used to do with Neil Sedaka? Because Neil Sedaka was on his label, Melba Records. And so, so the tokens were in a group when that was a, this uh, extinct group when you retook the yeah. name? This it, it didn't exist. And, and, and Morty said, do it. So we said, OK, we just wanted our record out, you know. I mean, I, I was never crazy about the name, but right. it, it is what it is. So um, um, and, and then he said, OK, I'll put it out. And he put it out, put it out. And it started happening. And I went to see Jay, who was who sang the lead, who I hadn't seen since all this started because he was working at Rainbow Shops. You know, to him, this was not going to never going to be anything. Mm -hmm. So he kept his job and he was getting married in 60. I believe he was getting married in in in, in October of that year. Yeah. And and so he didn't he, you know, he didn't really see much of a future in it, but and and so we we got news that Dick Clark wanted to put us on his show. Wow! So I met I met Jay on Brighton Beach Avenue. He was just you know oddly we didn't have an appointment or anything. I just happened to see him. I said, Jay, do you know that we, they asked us to do Dick Clark? And for the first time, he smiled. <laughs> that was the first time in the whole thing that he smiled. Really? I said, Yeah. He said, you really? I said, yeah. And we did Dick Clark, you know, and, and the record Tonight I Fell in Love became a top 15 hit. And that's what, and then of course, we went to Morty Criff to ask him for an advance. And he said, you're still in the red. I said, how could we be in the red? The record's in the top 20 or something. He said, well, you know, of course. I said, you're right. So we, we told Marty, so, we, we, we left the office and we tried to get to RCA because it was only one record deal we had. Yeah. And so we went back to Morty. We said, are you going to pay us? Are you going to give us an advance? He said, no. He said, well, then we're going to RCA. They want us. And he said, well, what could they do for you that I can't? And we all said in unison, pay us. Yeah, give us money. And right. And so we went to RCA. And we left Morty and he put out a group called Johnny and the Tokens with a song called The Taste of a Tear, which, you know, and he worked and he, and he, you know, he wanted it. He wanted to hurt us, obviously. Yeah. It was done purely to hurt us, but um, it didn't go anywhere. And then we had the Lion Sleeps Tonight. Yeah. Ha, ha, now you had mentioned this was originally uh, with the South African song, A Whim Away. Yeah, it was originally. Well, it was a song that Jay taught us. It was done by the Weavers. Um, in, in, in the 50s, in the early 50s, by Pete Seeger and the Pete Se Yeah. No lyric, just a wee move. If you heard, you look up the original record, you could, I wish I had it here. I, I don't, but, but we did our own take on it. As I said, we made a demo of how we would do it. And RCA wanted to do it. And they were supposed to write us a lit. They, 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 this, you know, the, our producers, Hugo Luigi and George David Weiss, George Weiss wrote Lullaby of Birdland. You know, they wrote wow. uh, uh, um, um, the, the Elvis Presley hit, uh, What a Wonderful World. I mean, they they were very big, successful writers. They were big time. And so they, they, um, um, they were supposed to give us a lyric. And we kept going up there asking for the lyric and we never got one. 
finally, the day of this session, they gave us in the jungle the mighty, you know, the lyra, and they they expected us to sing the melody for, for the chant to the lyra. So it would have went in the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. In the jungle, the quiet jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. We did it, we are on the way. We did it. It would have been boring. It would have been the same melody over and over again. So we went down to the piano. We walked over to the piano, and the 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 soprano walked over to the to the uh, to the arranger. She had a question to the arranger, and we sat down at the piano and worked out in the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. In the jungle, the quiet jungle, the lion, it's a whole different melody, right? Yeah. And we wrote that. Still, we wrote it. And what Anita Darian asked, asked uh, uh, the, uh, the arranger um, was, um, that her part didn't seem to work in the in the range it was in. Sammy Lowe was the arranger. He said, "Can you do it eight VA, a, a, an octave higher?" And she said, "Yeah, I can make that note." And she did it eight, and that's why it has that wonderful sound, that, that high soprano sound. That was Anita Darian. She says, "I spoke to her. It, it was she was mad at us for forty years. And we never knew why." Finally, I got her number. She by this time she was in her in her eighties, you know, and I called her up and I asked her, what, "What? Why were you mad at us?" She said, "Because I asked them to send me a record, and they told me that you said I couldn't have one." I oh, said, wow. I said, "We never said that. We didn't even know you wanted one. Every, and in fact, we were all hitting on her. You know, she was adorable. We were all hitting on you. Why would we not give you? You know, why would not? So I, we kind of made that up. And another thing that I that I made up uh, with the Lion Sleeps tonight, I always felt guilty that we took this record that Pete Seeger did. You know, who was a folk singer. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if you know his history, but he's very he's a very successful folk singer. The Weavers, right? And I always felt guilty that we took this song of his that we thought was like a purity thing and we turned it into this commercial tricky little record, mm -hmm. right? So I met somebody, oddly enough, on the Joe Franklin show a few years, years back, I don't know, whenever it was, who knew him and I, who knew Pete Seeger. And I asked her if she could apologize for us, right? So. She said, sure. And she, she called me a couple of, sent me an email. She said, Pete was thrilled what we did with the Lion Sleeps tonight. He loved the record. He thought it was wonderful. He didn't have any ill feelings about it at all. And we felt terrible for 40 years, you know? <laughs> I mean, these are the little stories that nobody knows, you know? Well, uh, the false, I, I call it a falsetto where it goes high up. I can't even do it. Originally, that was a woman that did it. Yeah. Originally, that was a woman that did it on the record. What? So that was a woman's voice that did it on the record. No, no, no. Oh. The woman's voice was a high voice. Yeah. On the top of it, the lead voice was Jay. The one went to I can't do that voice. <laughs> that high. That was a soprano, Anita Darian. Mm. When you hear that, th th that soprano above everything, yeah. that was a jungle quality. That was a far off in the trees quality. That wasn't that. The, the, the regular, the lyric and the initial chant was Jay. Yeah, but but when, when you do that on when you did that on stage or the concerts, she wasn't there, was she? I, I don't remember Anita women Darian? being in your group. Anita Darian? Yeah. No, no, no. We didn't. We we use the we use the uh, we use the um, keyboard or or something else to play that melody. And then occasionally, like when we were performing with the girls these last few years, you know, the girls group that we put together, one of the girls was able to reach those notes, so she sang it. That was a thrill, you know. When did you realize that this was a mega hit that would? you know, follow you throughout your lifetime that became uh, an iconic classic. 
you, you know, it's funny. It's a good question because at the time you had a hit record, it went away, and that was it. You know, and no one cared anymore. But this song had a staying power that seemed to penetrate the time. I mean, it still has. It still. It still has an effect. It's people still know it. Uh, they've remade it. A, a lot of groups have re-recorded it. Many, many different re-recordings. And and I don't know. I mean, I I didn't I didn't I didn't think any record would would last the the way you know after a couple of weeks. But what happened was that era has a certain amount of fans still and there are and and there's also all of these shows that are on that play these records and and so that era that music has stuck around pretty well i mean you know uh, uh um i know because i get royalties for it yeah you know? I, I i don't think there's a week that goes by that in some venue i i, I don't hear the tokens in a whim away or a lot yeah. the lion sleeps tonight or something or something we we produced don't forget, we produced He's So Fine, One Fine Day. We produced Ty Yellow Ribbon, Knock Three Times, Candida. We produced uh, the, 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 the Happenings, um, 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 Go Away. Um, Go Away, Little Girl. Uh, we, we did Go Away, Little Girl with them, which was a success. We did uh, I Got Rid of Them. And we did, uh, oh, so, um, 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 uh, Summer, what, what it was a summer record? Why, why can't I remember? Wait, right. I can tell you. <laughs> you got to go. Jeez, what a brain. Wait, I know what it is. I'll tell you. Don't go away. No, we, we, we'll see the back of you. Wait, this isn't it. Okay, but we'll, 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 we'll do it next week. Oh, well, anyway, I can't find it. Oh, yeah, it's up there. Anyway, um, we had a big hit oh, oh, when summer, oh, no, uh, the summer record, or whatever. I'll, it'll, I'll think of it in a minute. My, you know, every, every once in a while, my brain goes away. Uh, but, uh, yeah. but it'll but, come but, back. By the way, someone owns a copyright to that record, right? Or how do you get paid? Is, is it the group that gets paid, the arranger gets paid, or the? Uh, how how does that work? The copyright goes to the writer and publisher. Mm -hmm. There was a there was a there was a called a statutory fee or rate, which is around nine ten cents a, 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 a record. So, out of the money that the record earns, the see you in September was the one that see we see you in that. September or lose you too or something like that. Alone, yeah. an arena. Um, the the publisher and the writer divide the money 50-50. So if 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 see him to so if if see him in September earns money at, on the at, because of airplay or because of rec, mechanical there's mechanical yeah. and there's airplay and the fee that the publisher gets is split with the writers that's how that works but the, so the artists don't get paid for anything let's say it's a, the tokens unless they, unless they wrote the song unless they wrote the song yeah. No, the artist, but now this is a new thing. Sound Exchange has come up with a thing for the last 10, 15 years that they collect money for, for artists on this on the same kind of not the same exact formula, but the same concept that the publish get publishers get paid for the with the writing and publishing. So I get a check every three months from Sound Exchange. Fantastic. Sometimes the sometimes the they started out, they used to be $25, $30. We got up to a point where they were thousands. Wow. And there's still, it's still a nice yeah. amount of money that just comes in, you know, like that kind of concept. Of yeah. have, have, you, have you ever figured out uh, over the years how much you've collected for uh, no. The Lion Sleeps Tonight? No. That, 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 that should be interesting if you ever have time. I was once told that Carol King and Jerry Goffin were getting... Well, I, I'll tell you this. I have a friend who wrote Under the Boardwalk and Good Lovin', Artie Resnick. Yeah. 
And after, after he cooled off as a writer, you know, because you hit a certain age, they don't believe you have a brain anymore. After he cooled off, um, he got a job in, on Canal Street, working in a, in, a, in a, that sells underwear and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, he was looking for, to, to, to make a living, you know, because he wasn't. And then all of a sudden, one year, he, he got a royalty statement from ASCAP for over, for two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. And and he and of course he left. He left it. He he stopped selling underwear. Yeah, I would say and, so. And, and 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 that amount, that money came in. I can't imagine what Carol and Jerry are getting. Or Barry. Well, well, yeah. Well, well, Carol in her own right. Uh, well, not, not Jerry. Uh, you know, when she started performing. Yeah, she, 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 you know, I mean, she, I, I, I regret, we, we were friends, you know, I mean, we were all friends and we used to go to Carol and Jerry's house on the weekends. They had a pool, they lived in West Orange and we were really friends and, and we did a lot of stuff. She did, we did a lot of recordings. We recorded a lot of our songs and I saw her years and years later, like when I was out here and she barely recognized me. I felt bad, you know. Oh well, like, yeah, but she knew who you were, but she didn't recognize. Uh, yeah, but it was not. We used to hug and, you know, I mean, you know, it was well, a real. real well, well, I'll tell you, man. Let's contact her and see if we can get her on the show. No, I wouldn't even know where to find her. Uh, I, I don't have any relationship with her. I don't. I, no. I don't. I don't. I don't. Yeah, but, but I, I, I mean, I've seen her on the show for because of I asked her. I, I, I've obviously, I've, I've seen her many times. She's being interviewed. With the president. What does she need with yeah. me? Well, because you ever you bring back the old world to her. It doesn't, it, you know, it, it, I, I, I mean, yeah. I, 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 I cherish the time we spent. Yeah. I cherish the phone call when she called us to do one fine day, yeah. you know, and she did, a, she did a couple of recordings with us, wonderful records that we made um, um, as, as the tokens. You know, she was always, we were always, but then when, when, when she got, uh, when her and Jerry broke up and, you know, it kind of, and she went on her own, yeah. she became such a superstar, you know, which well, well, no yeah. one doubted, no one doubted that she would. Well, well, well that, that, that's as they say, life happens. Yeah, but, but I don't regret any of it. And I, yeah. And, you know, I mean, I, I know, I know a lot of people, I met a lot of people. I was thinking about it, how many people I met through that part of my life. And then the second half of my life, when I got into television and writing for TV and managing Robert Guillaume and, and all of the trips we did. I mean, I was at the White House twice, yeah. you know. Well, well for Phil, hold, on a tour. Uh, for Phil, hold on to that thought because we ran out of time. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to be boring. No, no, and we'll do no, no. Uh, we ran out of time. Or we're we're about okay. thirty five minutes into the show. Yeah, I believe you. So what we'll do is we'll continue it next week. I mean, okay. you got a lot. You got. Well, I'll tell you how we got to Tony Orlando and Dawn. Where did yeah. how did that happen? Well, let's. Got, uh, I'll give you. A, I'll give you a little uh, preview. I got Tony uh, his first job in the industry after he had Halfway to Paradise and Bless You, and then got cold, he couldn't find work. And I got him a job, me. Well, let's, let's, leave, phone call. let's leave that as a teaser for next week. I will. Okay, you have a great week. We'll see you next, uh, next time. Next, and, next, oh, yes. And find yes. out about the Tony Orlando and the rest of the rock and roll world. Yeah, and how, and how the happenings happen, too, you know. <laughs> you got it, kid. All right, cutie. Have fun. Take care of yourself. Bye. Bye.